The question of whether the Earth is really the only celestial body in the universe that harbors life forms is one of the most compelling in modern space research. In the search for extraterrestrial life forms, one particular planet has repeatedly come into the focus of scientists. Venus, known in the past as Earth's twin, our cosmic neighbor with its poisonous cloud cover, ultimately came to be considered a life-hostile place. An exciting new thesis shows, however, that the existence of life on Venus is possible despite all doubts. What this fascinating theory is in more detail, and how the potential habitability of our sister planet is generally assessed, will now reveal to you. Want to join us on our journey to the greatest mysteries of the universe? Then remember to subscribe and click on the bell to stay up to date from now on. By giving us a thumbs up, you're motivating us and showing that we can keep you engaged with the content of our posts. A groundbreaking theory. When experts discovered phosphine on Venus a few months ago, our neighboring planet once again became the focus of scientific interest. What had previously been categorically ruled out time and again now appears conceivable once again. Venus could be habitable. There is no question that life forms on Venus would be drastically different from terrestrial fauna. Nevertheless, a new study by experts shows that it could exist in principle. This exciting theory is based on the ammonia detected on Venus by the Pioneer and Venera probes. The exciting thing, according to the state of knowledge of the experts, ammonia should not occur on Venus at all. If the historical data collected by the unmanned exploration missions is indeed correct, there is an exciting question to be answered. What process produces the corresponding chemical compound of nitrogen and hydrogen? In order to get to the bottom of this great mystery, a team of international experts has now taken an extremely unusual approach. The scientists tackled a groundbreaking question. What if life exists in the clouds of Venus, and these are also the source of ammonia? In view of the fact that the impenetrable cloud cover of our neighboring planet is rich in toxic sulfuric acid, the experts' train of thought initially seems anything but comprehensible. In detail, however, the ammonia released could neutralize the sulfuric acid and trigger a chain of chemical reactions that could also explain the anomalies that researchers keep encountering in Venus's atmosphere. Basically, no known terrestrial life form could survive in the toxic clouds of Venus. The exciting thing in this respect is therefore the assumption that life on our sister planet is perhaps capable of modifying its environment itself so that it becomes habitable. But even in the world of the most breathtaking scientific theories, the following applies. Sound evidence is needed to substantiate the corresponding conjectures with facts. To ensure this, the experts have drawn up a kind of checklist that will be reviewed during future research missions. On it, in turn, are those expected chemical conditions that would coincide with the researchers' exciting theory. According to this, the first thing to do is to confirm the presence of ammonia and oxygen on Venus, but also the proof that sulfur dioxide is neutralized into ammonium salts would be an exciting circumstance to find. If these characteristics are confirmed, it's possible that organic matter could also be detected in Venus's atmosphere. In fact, some of the researchers believe it's likely that the compounds in question will be identified by space probes in future missions. Accordingly, the microscopic life forms would probably cavort in the lower part of the Venus cloud cover. However, even this theory, which is as groundbreaking as it is controversial, is currently accompanied by some big question marks. If life exists on Venus, how can it proliferate in such a dry environment as the cloud cover? If water is formed when sulfuric acid is neutralized, what happens to it? But even the possible finding that Venus does not harbor extraterrestrial life forms would leave some questions unanswered. What chemical processes are then responsible for the anomalies in Venus's atmosphere? The Veritas and Da Vinci Plus Venus missions, which NASA expects to launch between the years 2028 and 2030, are expected to help shed some light on this cosmic mystery. Life on Venus 
Speculation about exotic Venusians is probably as old as space exploration itself. The sobering news up front is that there is currently no solid evidence that our neighboring planet once harbored, or possibly still harbors, life. Until the beginning of the 60s, however, a completely different picture was drawn in this respect. Since Venus had not yet been directly explored, people imagined that a warm, humid, jungle-like landscape existed beneath the planet's dense cloud cover. The thicket of the presumed Venusian jungle would have served as home to a wide variety of life forms. However, thanks to space probe missions completed soon after, we now know that Venus is so hot, averaging 860 degrees Fahrenheit, that the existence of living things on the surface can be virtually ruled out altogether. While the interest of the space agencies in Venus then experienced a dramatic slump, other researchers devoted themselves to the question of whether the celestial body was possibly once habitable before the unstoppable greenhouse effect was set in motion there. As described at the beginning of this article, the atmosphere of Venus has also become a focus of attention in the search for evidence of extraterrestrial life. A look back. According to the unanimous opinion of experts, our neighbor planet did not always have the scorching hot, highly poisonous face that it presents to us today. In fact, experts even believe that Venus was once adorned by vast oceans of water. However, as the incoming solar radiation became more intense over time, the oceans gradually began to evaporate more and more as a result of the rise in temperature and eventually dried up completely. Subsequently, the sun's ultraviolet radiation split the water molecules molecules in the stratosphere into oxygen and hydrogen, with the hydrogen escaping into space. The speculation that early Venus once carried large quantities of liquid water is accompanied by a no less exciting assumption. Microscopic life forms may also have existed there during the corresponding phase. Whether the corresponding Venus oceans existed for only a few million or even several billion years varies from model to model. A controversial thesis even assumes that the foundation stone for terrestrial life actually came from Venus. Life in the Venusian Atmosphere While the surface of the planet still resembles a cosmic furnace, the temperature and pressure continue to decrease with increasing altitude. In a range between about 30 and 40 miles above the surface, temperatures favorable to life prevail, at least in theory. In detail, the corresponding values in this zone settle at a range between plus 149 and minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. However, this is also the zone in which the impenetrable cloud layer of Venus is located, which surrounds the entire celestial body. In it are again droplets of strongly corrosive sulfuric acid. Finally, the cloud cover of Venus is completed by aerosols containing phosphorus and chlorine. The weather conditions prevailing there can be described as extreme. Sulfuric acid rain occurs there regularly. Due to the high temperatures prevailing in the lower regions, the acid droplets on the underside of the cloud cover decompose into water, sulfur dioxide, and oxygen. These elements then rise again to the higher cloud layers, where they form sulfuric acid. At the same time, Venus's atmosphere is characterized by whipping winds that reach speeds of 220 miles per hour and are thus much more intense than terrestrial hurricanes. Nonetheless, within the planet's atmosphere, there may exist some regions that allow phototrophy, which means the use of light as an energy source by living beings. The probes of the Pioneer and Venera missions have already encountered unusual details during their Venus research flights. For example, the unmanned spacecraft detected only very small amounts of carbon monoxide on Venus, although this should actually be abundant there due to lightning activity and solar radiation. At the same time, sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide were detected. These are two gases that typically react with each other and do not normally coexist. So there must be a, possibly biological, process on Venus which maintains the equilibrium between the two gases. The objects that appear as dark stripes on UV photographs of Venus could be hypothetical microorganisms in the cloud cover. The corresponding microorganisms could harness the sun's ultraviolet radiation as an energy source. And indeed, some research published a few years ago concluded that the ominous dark spots have spectroscopic characteristics that match those of terrestrial microbes. 
In January 2020, evidence was discovered that Venus is currently volcanically active. The emissions that enter the planet's atmosphere as a result could provide an important source of nutrients for hypothetical life forms in the cloud cover. The news published in September 2020 that phosphine has been detected in Venus's atmosphere is also making waves. For in fact, there is no explanation on Venus for how the gas could be formed by non-biological processes. However, scientists later announced that they had significantly overestimated the amount of phosphine in the initial analysis. In fact, it is also conceivable that the identified phosphine concentrations have a volcanic origin. We're interested in your opinion. What do you think about this exciting theory of experts that makes life on Venus seem possible? Write us your thoughts, your suggestions, and your feedback to today's contribution in the comments below. In the mood for more exciting videos on the topic of outer space? Then take a look at the other contributions of our channel, which we have linked for you in the credits. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time.